Hello, my name's Jack and this is Life in Motion. And welcome to my new Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. This video is all about first impressions. I'm all around the outside, the inside, and talk a few numbers and probably start the car up in the hope I can see what I think of my new daily driver. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure to subscribe, see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, you know what? Let's jump in. When this car was new, the GTS cost £59,800 hundred pounds and then you can add your optional extras on top things like the gts interior pack miami blue is a very bright color and some other bits besides that means that this car as a 2018 car with around 20,000 miles cost me 57,990 pounds this car probably with the spec was around mid to late 60s when it was brand new so it's probably lost about 10 to 15 percent of depreciation so one of the reasons I really wanted to go for the car is because the GTS has a good residual value. Also, let's just take a minute to appreciate how good it looks. So this car is finished off in one of my most favorite Porsche colors, Miami Blue. My last car was one called Agate Grey. It was very nice, it was very subtle. I wanted something a bit more flamboyant. The weather at the moment is glorious in the UK and what better than have a bright color like this. At the front, you've got the GTS Sports Design Pack, so you have a slightly different bumper. As we move around to the, the front lights, you've got PDLS Plus or Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus, which gives you automatic beam as well as the four spotlights you get at the front. Moving to the side of the car, you've got the 20 inch Carrera S alloys in matte black, which, and also you've got red brake calipers, which denotes a Cayman S and Cayman GTS with the red calipers. You've also got a nice little GTS logo at the side. Now, before I speak of some of the features of the back of the car, you might think that this car is quite low, and that's because it has Porsche Active Suspension Management and Sports Suspension. That means the car is 20 millimeters lower than the base Cayman. Now, I thought my original base Cayman did look a little bit high. I think this car really sits down well. It looks great. But at the back, we have clear lenses on the lights. We have a different splitter as part of the GTS design sports kit and we also have the gts logo at the back we've got a retractable spoiler here and other than that that's pretty much the outside so guys one thing to note do you like this color miami blue make sure to comment below whether you like miami blue whether you've gone for another color whether you've seen different cars in this kind of color let me know below <music> Now, as we step inside the GTS, what are we greeted with? Well, to start with, we have these sports seats and they are glorious. They hug you very nicely on the sides. They have Alcantara in the middle and leather around the outside and a nice embossed GTS logo. They are two-way electric, so the back of the seat goes forward and backwards. Now, to let you know, this car has a GTS interior back. What does that give you? Well, a lot of goodies. You've got an Alcantara steering wheel, Alcantara around the PDK gear shifter. You've also got a full leather extended dash, carbon fiber inlays, and Alcantara pretty much everywhere else you touch. The bottom of the glove box, the side of the doors, and you can see more carbon in the center on the side of the doors. So as we turn the ignition on, what are we greeted with? Well, we have the traditional 718 Cayman analog dial. So we've got a rev counter in the middle, a speed on the left-hand side, and on the right, we've got this digital display. It gives you things like media, like navigation, other displays around miles per gallon and G-forces, if you're ever gonna need that. If I'm honest, I think the GTS is starting to look a little bit dated. The 718 Cayman's been out since 2016. And so over those last six or so years, 
it's not really changed at all inside. Now, things like the Jaguar F-Type, the Audi TT RS, the Alpine A110 have all got virtual screens, virtual displays. And so this car is starting to look a little bit dated. Comment below what you think. Does the 718 Cayman as a car start to look a bit dated on the inside? But anyway, as we drop below those, you've got some multifunction steering wheel. So you've got volume controls, you can answer and end calls. Uh, below that, you've also got this little button here. Now that changes your driving modes in the middle from Sport, Sport Plus and also Individual, but it also has this little button. Now, because I've got the PDK, it means that I can press this button and something called Sport Response comes on. That gives me 20 seconds of ultimate driving. It means that it blips the throttle, the gears will change, and it'll ultimately be in the best position to overtake or receive the most amount of power for 20 seconds. As we move to the middle, we've got this touchscreen, which is great. It works very well, it's responsive, it does what I need it to do, but if I'm honest, I plug my phone in using this cable that's central in the middle here. You've actually got one USB port there and one USB port in the glove box. I use CarPlay. I've got an Apple, so I use Apple CarPlay, and I just have my media, my maps through there. I never use the maps in here. I never use the media, really. It's got a CD player. Who's got a CD anymore? No one. So I use that. I think most owners of the car would use one, and it works perfectly for me. As we drop down, you've got automatic climate control, which you can control here. You can synchronize both sides. Obviously, you've got the vents there you can turn on and off. You've also got heated seats as well. If we drop to the middle here, this is always, I think, a really telling sign of basically how rich you are. How many buttons of this is filled? In my scenario, I can't afford the big, expensive GTS you've got today. Also, I probably couldn't afford a car with all these different buttons. What I've got is sports exhaust, and Porsche Active Suspension Management. I also got one for the spoiler and you can turn your start stop off. But if I'm honest, the sports exhaust gives me something a bit louder and the Porsche Active Suspension Management just hunkers down and really solidifies the car. I use those kind of buttons every so often and they do enough for me. I don't know really what else I would want on the car as a different extra, a different button. So down there again, it's very simple. It's very Porsche, it's very minimalist and it works very well. As we move to the passenger side, the passenger also has the same sport seats with the GTS Emboss logo. We've also got a glove box in the middle here. And I said, you've got a USB button there for the passengers to charge their phone. You've also got storage space. I've got a couple of different uh, glasses in there and the manual and it all kind of fits very well. You've also got, which I really like in my Porsche. I loved it on the first one. I'm glad it's still there. And the second one is cup holders. Push that down. You push these in and they fold out. And then you can close that away to keep a nice streamlined design to the dash. They work very well. They're slightly shallow in here, but they do absolutely fine if you have a Starbucks. And then as you say, you can put those away. If you don't have them both, you can just have one, and I often have one just for me. If you go to the side of the car, you've also got Bose surround sound system. And if we go further to the dash, you've got the leather interior pack on the dash, as I said, and you've got the sports chronograph in the middle basically a nice clock that comes with the sports chrono package giving you the clock the little button there and also you've got pdk we've got launch control so what do i think of the inside what's my first impressions well everything is really nice to touch the alcantara is a really cool option as part of the gts interior pack i like that i like that it's got it on the interior on the gates and we also got it on the side and the door handles I also like the carbon fibre. It's gloss carbon fibre. I've always underdone about whether I really like the look of like exposed carbon fibre on cars. I really like it. It's tastefully done in here. It's on the dash. It's gloss. It looks nice and high end, but also it's not everywhere. So it's just a nice amount of carbon fibre. Also got it down the side there. And I guess it does mean that it, I can see some scratches. So perhaps that's going to potentially annoy me if I drop something, but I've just got to be super, super careful. I like the leather dashboard. Again, it's part of the GTS pack. My last one didn't have it. It just had a nice kind of soft touch plastic to it. I don't really mind. It's just part of the pack. So I'm happy it's there. Equally, I might not be that fussed about it. The seats are lovely. I had them in the last car though, so I'm pretty much used to these. But first impressions are really good on the inside. The not so good. Well, as I said, it's a little bit dated on side. I don't mind that I don't really use the technology because I have CarPlay. But also, there isn't a huge amount of tech in the car. It's pretty driver-focused, I guess, which is 
probably the main idea. I've got cruise control, I've got automatic lights, I've got the PDS Plus, I've got automatic beam. It's very easy to use, but it's no more than that. It's not a technically advanced car. The other thing, I've had this car for a little while now, and the Alcantara steering wheel does get a bit grubby. Now, I'm really conscious I don't eat in this car. I will have a Starbucks, a drink, go through a drive through but I'll only have that. When I get in, I try and make sure I wash my hands before I get in the car, but let's be honest, you know, at some point, you're going to probably get in. You might get a bit hot and your hands are a bit sticky. I can already feel, and I've washed this twice now, and it takes about half an hour, 40 minutes to, to wash it, and then obviously it's got to dry out after that. And it does revive it. It does come back up, and it feels nice and soft again, but... If I'm honest, if I had a leather steering wheel, I'd probably be a bit happier. But it looks great, and I'm sure on a track day it would be, be really, really useful. So, now it's time for you to tell me what you think of the interior. You've already commented below on what you thought about the Miami Blue and the outside. Comment below. Is it out of dated in here, or is it up to date and modern? Do you like the way it's laid out? The carbon fibre, the leather, the Alcantara. Do you find Alcantara annoying, like I do? Let me know in the comments below. So, let's finally talk about performance. This car, the 718 Cayman GTS, has a two and a half liter, four cylinder engine with 365 horsepower. And it's mounted right there in the middle of the car. Now this particular car has a PDK gearbox and with the sports chrono and launch control goes from 0 to 62 in 4.1 seconds. Now my original car went from 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds with PDK and launch control. That means this car is up 65 horsepower from the base car and around 0.6 of a second quicker to 62. You have to have a decision on whether the GTS is worth the extra money. Now, when I bought my base Cayman around two-ish years ago, it was around 42 or 43,000 pound. With this car, a couple of years later, but actually being a similar age, is around 57-ish thousand pounds. You're looking at around 15 or 20,000 pounds more for the equivalent GTS than a base. So is that extra performance worth it for you? Comment below, let me know. For me, after going from the base to the GTS, well, I'm going to do a review very soon, so make sure to keep subscribed and I'll let you know. But for now, before I end the video, let's have a listen to what the GTS sports exhaust sounds like. So there you have it. That has been my first impressions video of my new Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. I really, really like this car. Obviously you can hear what it sounds like. I think it sounds great. Miami Blue, I've been lusting after a Miami Blue car for a very long time. I think it looks fantastic. It sounds great. It's brilliant for daily driving with, and I'll let you into a little bit of an insight, around 28, 29 miles per gallon even though it's still got 365 horsepower and it's quicker than most cars out there. Now, what I want to make sure I do is ask you guys what your opinions are. So again, what do you think of the color? What do you think of the look of the outside? Inside, is it dated? Do you like it? Do you like carbon fiber? What do you think about Alcantara? And also that exhaust. Do you think it sounds good? Do you like the sound of it? Comment everything below. Guys, I'm gonna make a lot more videos of this car, including a drive, including a review, and I'm gonna let you know what I think about the car. So, make sure to subscribe to see plenty future videos to come. But for now, well, I'll see you soon.